Because the devil knew how to pull you away from God. If you are sick, you will come to church. If you are possessed by a demon, you will come to church. But when you are in need of money, you will choose that you need money. You are troubled in your heart about your financial crisis. Some of you could be troubled in your life because of your financial crisis. Because of this pandemic, many we know, many lost their job. Their income is not stable. In some places where their uh, pay were reduced due to certain things, side orders, they were terminated. Or you might be doing some kind of work which you have to, it is based on commission. Hallelujah. It is not a permanent income for you. Now due to this, you are unable to pay your loans, your rentals, your utilities. All are impending. So, while waiting to uh, look away for a way to settle it. Now from four sides, you are being pressed, being oppressed. You are being oppressed. And you are trying to come out of it. You are giving up from that. Because it is a storm in your life right now. It is a storm. You are trying to settle up this loans and the next loan on next month. But now all are being added up. You are unable to settle it. In some of you, your expenses are more than your income. If your, exp your, your income is 2K, your expenses are 4K per month. And some of you might say, yeah, it's me. I'm still surviving by the grace of God. Glory be to God. So, due to this, you are being troubled in your heart. You are wondering how to overcome. And because of this, you are thinking it. Day and night you are sleepless, you are unable to sleep, how to face the bankers, how to talk to them, how to arrange another uh, payment for it. Thinking about it all the time, you, know, you are wondering that what would happen if someone come and you know, take away your car, your belongings, and what would your relative will think about you. All these are troubling your heart day and night. You are becoming sleepless because of this. But it, behind the screen you should understand that this is the work of the devil. The work of the devil. The very first place where the devil will touch the people is on their financial crisis. Man would worship God, praise God when he have everything. But at the moment he has no money in his hand, that's when the true color of man can be seen. Glory be to God if you stand firm for God even in the midst of your financial crisis. Because many could not make it. Many were not able to make it. When they were tested financially, when they were tested financially, they are not able to make it. When you are facing financial crisis, this is where you will get too far from God. You begin to leave God slowly. You say that, oh pastor, I need to go and work extra. I need to do some overtime. I need to start something else because I need to make up all my payments. I need to do this, that. And slowly your prayer time will reduce and you stop praying. And your church activities will be stopped. Completely, you will not be able to join the services. You will not join the Sunday services. You will not join the, the fasting prayers. Whatever it could be in the church. Why? Because there is a need for you. Because the devil knows how to pull you away from God. If you are sick, you will come to church. If you are possessed by a demon, you will come to church. But when you are in need of money, you will choose that you need money. Hallelujah. The devil knows your weakness. Through these many Christians, those who were once strong with the Lord have backslided now and left the Lord. Why? They are tempted. They are tested in money. Hallelujah. Have you noticed something? When there is a huge amount that you need to settle up, when you come to church, you will not be able to worship God properly. You will not be able to focus on God. Your heart will be upon the thing. How am I going to settle it? Tomorrow is the last day. The Tuesday will be the last day. I need to settle up this amount. How am I going to face this? Hallelujah. You are being troubled. You are being... This, this is how the devil steal your peace. The thief come to steal, kill and destroy. This is how he steals. He causes you a problem. And this is where you will leave God. Hallelujah. He knows what to steal and what to kill. When he steals your blessings, your money, that's when he can kill your faith on God. Hallelujah. But you don't realize the other side is, God is using these 
to test you, to see your heart. Your fall in financial is not the end of your life. There are many who fall financially, they rise up even higher than what they were before. This is something you should understand. We can see in the Bible, a man called Job, who lost everything in a day. This Job was not an ordinary person. He's the richest person on his time. He had everything. He had everything with him. Hallelujah. People will bow before him. When he is walking, people rise up to pay respect to him. Such a person he is. A respectful person who helps the poor, who have everything in his hand. He had many poor people. He had many beggars out there. But one day he ended up being a beggar as well. It is amazing to see that in a day, you know, overnight, everything has turned up. He become nothing. But that is not the end of his life. That was not the end of his life. Hallelujah. We can see that even at that moment, he was praising God. You see that God gave, God took. God gave me children. God gave me all the blessings. And now God took it. Praise be to the name of God. Now the question is, would you be able to do that? Ask your neighbor, would you be able to bless God with all your heart when you have nothing, a single cent in your hand? You know, most of you are praying, Lord, never ever put me into the shoes of Job. Some of you are praying like that. But you are also praying, Lord, bless me like job, double portion. My brothers and sisters, without thorn, there is no grace. Without test, there is no best. But that, that is not the end for you. A double portion is waiting for you. Double of what you had in the past. God has showed you in the past a wealthy life. Where in a season you live a wealthy life, sometimes you are dreaming how, how nice if I can go back to the days where I don't have to worry about anything, I have this much of amount, I can go anywhere, I can do anything, but now I'm in zero. My brothers and sisters, that was a vision for you. What you saw in the past is the shadow of what about to come in the future. It is something about to come in your life. God has showed you in advance a trailer concerning your future. Now, when you are going through this financial crisis, what you must do in your life? You see, very first thing is that give God the first priority in your finance. Even in your financial crisis, you must learn to give unto God first. Now, this is where many Christians, they fail. Many Christians, they fail because they are not a good giver. They will say that, Lord, I pray that if you bless me with this and that, that and these, then I will do something for you. I will make sure all these are changed, Lord. I will make sure I will build a big thing for you, Lord. All these will become like a fairy tale. But the truth is, the true giver who has the giving heart will give when he or she has nothing in hand. You must be able to bless God even when you are living a curseful life. Secondly, some people would say, Pastor, I'm unable to make it to the church because I'm financially very down. Maybe next month I will come. Why, brother? Why, sister? They said, no, Pastor, I need to find money for the petrol to fill up my, my vehicle. I need to uh, find uh, money for the grab, for the bus, for the train, anything. Let me tell you something. The amount of money that you use to pay the taxi driver, the bus, it all becomes an offering to the Lord. Don't worry about what will happen next. What am I going to do if I finish all the money? God will provide. If you are coming to the house of the Lord, giving first priority to God, God will provide all that you need. Don't forget to include the toll money as well. That also becomes an offering to the Lord. Because what is the purpose that you are coming to church? To worship Him. When you spend to come to His church, it's not only the amount of money that you put in the offering back, but the money that spent to come to church, it becomes an offering in the eyes of the Lord. It costs you something. We can say that we love God. We can say that we truly, you know, we want God in our life. But giving is a way of expressing our love to God. When you buy something for someone, it is a way of you expressing your love to them. And that's what God did at the cross. 
he gave his, himself to us expressing how much he loves us and today when, even though we are not financially blessed but still we are able to do something for our giving son it, it express how much we love god so if you are going through a financial test it means god is testing your faith we people always believe in money instead of god so every one of us will have to go through this in their life we have to go through the financial crisis this is where you will learn that your pocket is always empty but god's pocket is always full you can't plan anything on your own pocket but only on god's pocket he is the provider he will supply all that we need